Good afternoon on this fine and sunny afternoon. Hello. So, what are you doing on a gorgeous day like today indoors? You should be out there enjoying the sunshine. Oh, I forgot! You can't go out! You can't go anywhere! Forgot that! That's the point, isn't it? We're all at home. So here we are at home. The sun's come out. It's a gorgeous day. Oh my goodness me. What a lovely day. And I've um, been looking at a couple of things this morning. I've been quite busy looking at paintings that I've been working on in the past week or so and thinking, do they need fiddling with? got a job to do this afternoon you thought you were just going to watch oh no your job is to be my spare pair of eyes today I need your eyes to look at things as they're going along here uh, I'm just uh, laying out my colors here in case you're wondering I'm choosing some buff titanium some terra verde some uh, green earth earthy colors and I'm going to need some burnt umber. So, I'm looking for that quick drying jobby. What have I got down here? Raw umber. Yeah, that'll do. That's a nice bit of colour in there. Raw umber. So, you're going to be some uh, eyes for me today because I've been looking at this, I've been thinking about this painting. I started this earlier in the week. Uh, I'll remind you. Now then, what I was doing earlier in the week was painting daffodils that uh, I saw out on my daily bike ride and I worked on this in acrylics so it's been a busy morning in the mallet household today we uh, uh, Mrs Mallet had to go and catch the post because um, there were quite a few orders coming in uh, for weekend things like for instance people's birthdays coming up and uh, people have been buying utterly brilliant My Life's Journey, which is nice. So uh, those I've been dedicating and putting little messages in. And they've gone off in the post today. So you should be getting those. If you ordered one uh, uh, yesterday or this morning, they'll, they will turn up on Monday uh, in your post box. That's nice, isn't it? Good prompt delivery from the mallets here. So let me just tell you, that's what you're waiting for. Uh, utterly brilliant, my life's journey. Uh, and I, if you've been seeing on the Facebook uh, or any of the other social media accounts, you know, we all have different ones that we prefer. Some people like Insta, some people like Twitter, some people like Facebook, some people like YouTube. Some people like, oh, I don't know, there's millions of these things, aren't there? There's TikTok. I discovered TikTok the other day. That's a bit of fun. Um, I've been doing these things I've been, I, I was doing two years ago uh, when I was cycling the Camino de Santiago with my paints attached to the back of the bike. I spent six months training for it, working out how to do this. Uh, how could it possibly be done? carrying the paints uh, and working from the back of the bike now what you're seeing here is me putting in some more detail of the branches of the tree uh, because there wasn't enough detail for me I, I was being a bit uncomfortable with it I've got an issue with this tree here and you can see what the issue is it's very obvious Um, no, they're not particularly expensive and the, the good news with them is that uh, even though you might have to make a, an initial outlay, they last for ages. I'll, I'll give you an example. That tube there, that actual tube is around about 
35, 40 years old. You can tell by the age of the label on it and also by the gloop. Can you see that oil glooped around the lid? So, but I'll, I'll take the lid off and I can squeeze that out and I can use that. It's a great, great bit of paint. It lasts forever and oil paint is, um, it is in some ways much less expensive than, than acrylics. Not in the initial outlay, because acrylics, you can buy them quite cheaply, but um, it eats the paint. Painting in uh, uh, acrylics uses more paint. So with um, oils, I find that they last longer and you get more for your money. But I use a variety of different colours. I'll use Winsor & Newton. I'll use uh, De La Roni. I use beautiful Italian paints called uh, Mamerio Classico and Van Dyke. I also use um, an interesting paint which is a quick drying alkalid oil paint like this. Um, nice, nice textures. They work just the same as normal oils, um, but they, uh, uh, they're quick drying. Now, the other thing I have tried, and I haven't got to grips with them yet, but I, uh, are water-based oils. That just doesn't sound right, does it? Water-based oil paint. How can you have that? Well, they still uh, are alive and um, wet for quite some time, um, unlike the alkalids, which dry a lot quicker. But... Um, the advantage is, of course, you can just mix with water. Uh, and I've tried them, I just haven't, they haven't quite suited my style. Um, so I've got in the cupboard behind here uh, a full set of them. And I might dig them out um, later in the week and we'll have a little go with some water-based oils and see how we get on. So I'm painting on top of the acrylics uh, in oils. Now... Nobody has spotted what's wrong with this tree. But the answer is here. If you look at this tree, this tree is in the foreground. It's in the foreground here. Big, thick trunk. So this tree needs to be further back. As you can see, this branch goes over in front of this tree so this is too far forward so I'm going to push that tree back and this is how I do it gone back isn't it see it's as simple as that you push the tree back Ah, perspective. Perspective is um, quite a difficult thing to explain uh, when you have uh, art lessons at, at school or any art class, you know, and you start looking at perspective. It, it's really weird. Why do your eyes play tricks on you? All right, Tom. Okay. Very fussy and quite demanding here. So just for you, Tom Sadler, I'm going to put them in. So we'll have a few. Uh, coming in like this. Now, Let's just have a little look and see how that's looking for you. Is that better, Tom? Are you happier with that now? Do tell me. Come on. Have your input. Your job here is not just to sit and watch. Your job is to give me your input. Because this is a, this is a joint effort here. Um, I have the benefit of a couple of thousand eyes. Um, because usually I'm just looking at this painting with my eyes, the two of them. But today, 
What have I got? I've got about 4,000 eyes. No, 4,000 pairs of eyes. So you might as well make use of them and don't just sit there reading your magazine and glancing across at the screen. Come on, be useful. Tell me what's missing. We'll have a little look. So the way to do that, by the way, is to squint a bit. Just squint a bit and that just takes the focus out slightly. Then go right that, because that always looks funny when you go like that, okay? Right, now then for me, I take a few steps back. I'm going to bring it forward again. Now let's drop it down. You see what's going on there? Ah, right. I can see what you're looking at. I can see exactly what you're looking at. And what you are saying is, uh, Timmy, I need some light on the side of this here tree. Yep. Now, my nephew is watching today. Jeff Bingham, he's watching in uh, New York. That's good. Hi, Jeff. Greetings, little nephew. Nice to have your company today. So, stuck at home and he's woken up this morning. Turned his phone on first thing to have a little look. That's what we do, don't we? We just have a little look. Now, what I'm doing here is putting a little bit of highlight into this tree. A bit of highlight into this, into this uh, tree because it is in fact a dead tree. Now, you can't tell that from just looking at, at the image, but it is. So now there's a nice skeletal tree going on there, and I'll put a little bit of this in. That's it. Yeah, good. It is nice coming back to a painting. I often find when I revisit a painting after a few days that I go, oh gosh, why didn't I see that the other day? And I find when I'm working in my studio, if somebody else comes in, they'll always spot something that I've missed. So, you know, I'm working away at this bit, at, the, at this particular bit of painting, and somebody else. Uh, I'll give you an example. Mrs. Mallet's just walked in now and, um, uh, and gone, Oh, what are you doing there? I mean, listen to this voice now. She's going to make a comment. It needs a nice frame. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Mrs. Mallet. Thank you very much. This image of the daffodils in the woods is one that I saw earlier this week on my lockdown uh, bit of exercise. The one bit of exercise we're supposed to do each day. Things occur and move. Now, those trees, the, the, the lovely darkness of the trees, uh, what we're going to need here, uh, I'm using very few brushes, got a little thin brush here, going to use this for a little bit of highlight. Going on here. See the difference? As soon as I do that, these trees start to become not just a blob of different colors but they become shape they become shapes of different trees doing different things we have in england the best trees in the world and i have to say the best climate now our good american friends who are watching this morning in new york and in florida uh, will disagree with me. Our Australian pals who are tuning in from Victoria uh, or New South Wales, they'll disagree with me. They will say, well, what about the wonderful gum trees? And they are. They're beautiful trees. And then the Americans will say, what about the giant redwoods? Yep, beautiful trees. But there's something about the native English trees of oak. This curly look here, this is the ancientness of an oak tree. 
very European, particularly gorgeous in Britain. We've got lots of lovely oak trees. And right now, this month, they are at their finest. They're the last tree in the wood to put uh, their leaves on. There's a nice rhyme that goes. If the oak before the ash, then we get a tiny splash. If the ash before the oak, then we're in for a hell of a soak. Right, tells you what the weather's going to do um, later on in the summer. Right, at this stage, but both trees are uh, yet to put any leaves on. There's a little bit of a hint something might happen in the woods. You'll see it when you take your dog for a walk. You'll be looking out now. You'll be looking out to see where the leaves are going on. And I was uh, out the other day and I noticed the beauty of... Uh, uh, what was it now? Oh yeah, the apple orchard. Oh, the apple orchard. It's 30 years this year since I took a phone call in May. I took a phone call saying, would I come round for tea at Andrew Lloyd Webber's house? Because he had this idea to do a record. A record that has been the theme tune for my life for 30 years. She was afraid to come out of the locker. She was as nervous as she could be. She was afraid to come out of the locker. She was afraid that somebody would see. Two, three, four, tell the people what she wore. It was an... <laughs> come on, you know the words. Come, shout them out. Right, giving a bit of cloud cover here. Just a bit of cloud in the sky. Can you see what's happening? Yeah. Now that tree's pushed back. I'll tell you what I will do though. You and me both, we're looking at this and it's just a little bit too... Uh, too... too noticeable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push another branch in behind. Right, by doing that, it doesn't make that quite as um, demonstrative. It gives a little bit more room. It means that, oh, uh, okay, all these trees are, uh, are important and they've all got a, a, a role to play. Now, what I've done, as you can see, is just added a few little bits of branch and then your eyes doing a lot of the work here right okay now let's come back down to here again now and let's have another look at these daffodils okay now I want to do a bit of mixture I'm going to put in some light and shade in the green so I'm using a dark viridian okay that green I've chose is oh no it's, it's this it's the tarlow green um, so that's what it looks like got it right the right way to paint this is to clean your brushes after every stroke but I'm not doing I'm just going straight on because well because I can because I can right so it's 1990. Okay, it's April 1990. Can I just ask you what you were doing in April 1990? Hands up who was watching Wackaday. Me, 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 me. Well, it's the Easter holidays. And in the Easter holidays of 1990, we were in Berlin. Knocking down the Blair Inn wall with Mallet's Mallet. I remember this so well. Oh my goodness me, what a great occasion that was. 
So out there by the Berlin Blairlin Wall were all these people chipping away at it and they climbed up the ladder onto the top, got Mallet's Mallet out of the cage and bounced up and down smashing it to pieces. Anybody remember what we gave away as prizes on Wackaday that Easter? Anybody remember? Tom Sadler was five, in, five years old in watching you or Tom and Jerry. You were watching us, I have to say, because um, Tom and Jerry wasn't on on the other side. And it, uh, we had a bigger audience anyway. We had a bigger audience than whatever was on BBC at the time, which I think was the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, which they thought was doing very well when it got a quarter of our audience. Look, hey, I'm just telling you. I just remember it because they used to come around with the figures and said, right, they're getting desperate. They're putting on more cartoons and you're beating the pants off them. Well done, Mallet. Here you go. Where do you want to go to? Well, go and film in Berlin. Go and knock the Berlin Wall down with the Mallet. Oh, OK. Good. Don't come back unless you bring a bit of the Berlin Wall with you. Oh, OK. Right. Off we go. So we gave away bits of the Berlin Wall. Now, you see what's happened here now? Now I've put that dark green in. Do you see what it's doing? It's making the daffodils stand out more. Yep, we did have transformers. Robots in disguise. But on Wackaday, we didn't show the Transformers, we showed the cheaper option. The cheaper cartoon was Go Bots Go Botty! It's great. Good. So, good afternoon. If you just tuned in, where have you been? We've been going for uh, half an hour or so. And it's starting to feel a, a lot more detail in this. Yeah, I'm happier with that tree being further back. I'm happier with that one coming forward. Yeah, this one's an interesting tree here. There's, there's light and shade on it, and your eyes are making the difference. I'm adding a little bit of a lizard crimson into my uh, highlight here, just because... Uh, alizarin crimson gives it that little pink hue. Good. Good. Now, we need to have a little bit more variety in my yellow. So I've put some golden yellow into this now. So I'm going to add... Add this nice rich golden yellow into here. Remember, this is the last week of our daffodils in Britain. Maybe not in uh, northeast Scotland, you've probably got another week or so to, of them to go. But the thing you're going to notice this week is the arrival of the cherry blossom. So Send me a text, the first one to see some cherry blossom actually out. Um, and I've got Aubrecia cascading off the wall outside. It's a particularly lovely spring flower, Aubrecia. I'm going to paint that next. That's going to be my next outdoor painting. Which I'll be doing on the next one of these. I'm going to paint the arrival of spring in Britain. This is a spring which all of us will remember for the rest of our lives. We'll all talk about the spring of 2020 when we had to stay at home and watch the world happening. What it does, I had an interesting conversation this morning actually with my pal Ross. Ross is uh, in uh, 
is in Leeds. Can I add magic to one of the trees? asks Chris. It's a really good idea. Wait and see what happens in a minute. And uh, Ross was, uh, I was asking him how he's getting on. Uh, and he said, well, the thing I really like, he says, um, is that is I haven't got to make a decision about where to go today. I haven't got to make that decision because there's nowhere to go. The, or, or the only decision is, do I spend more time in the kitchen, the loft, or the lounge? And he said, it's quite liberating. Yeah, it is liberating. Yeah. And I'm also adding these uh, edited stories to YouTube. So in due course, I'm going to try them where we'll do them both live here and on YouTube. That's the idea anyway. Haven't done it yet, but uh, got to work out how to do that. But there's an app apparently where you can do the same picture going out live on both of them. So that's the plan. Right, that's feeling nice. Now then, we've got those lovely thick daffodils. There's something you, you might want to see here, and that is how thick the paint is. Can you see? It's thick dollops of paint. Of course I do, Ross. Of course I do. Uh, that's very important to have that. Uh, you know, the drafts and ideas you get ideas from uh, being out there and looking at stuff. And then some of those ideas come from uh, photos. I take a lot of photos. A lot of photos of things I've seen on each bike ride I do. Each little bit. Um, right. Now then. This is just for... Who was it who just asked this? Chris Wood. There he is. That's for you, Chris. Can you spot him? Well, he's there. I put Magic the Cockatiel in there because we have a lot of parakeets around at the minute. The little parakeets are lovely. They make a great noise. They come around, they eat everything. And that's him in there. Right in there. That's it. Lovely. Good, now I'm feeling a lot happier with this uh, picture now. Um, it, it's feeling like things are moving on with this. Um, paintings evolve. They don't just happen. You, you do bits and then you come back to it and you look at more bits and you think about things and you go, now is that going to work? Not sure. Not sure. Uh, Anybody, uh, anybody miss what happened yesterday? I'll show you what happened yesterday. Yesterday, I was looking at that. That's the camellias in my garden. So I painted camellias yesterday. I'll bring them forward and show you. Yeah. Uh, it's still drying. It's going to take a little while to dry that one. And uh, the other day I was um, out in my garden and painted this. That's the magnolia against the white wall. Strong shadows on the lawn. And the first tulips out. Yeah. So that was done with acrylics to start with. And then I've added over the top some um, oil paint. Ross was asking, where's the, the notebook and the sketch beforehand? Well, actually, for this painting, it's on the back side. <laughs> yeah. That's my sketch that I did uh, beforehand. So I started with that, sketched that. And then did that. 
So why did I do it on the back of the paper? Because I can. That's why. Okay. Uh, on Monday, last week, let me show you what I was doing on Monday. That's what I was doing on Monday, uh, and um, I wanted to paint the the trees, uh, the the sky, a constable sky. Geraldine in Harleypool is reading the book at the moment. Afternoon, Geraldine, and uh, that's the lovely Geraldine who um, pulled out of the water on New Year's Eve in 2000. And uh, you can read about the story in chapter four. Chapter four of Utterly Brilliant My Life's Journey. What does Geraldine look like? I'll tell you what she looks like. Because she's one of the drawings in here. Have a look. There she is. That's Geraldine there. So each of the chapters has uh, drawings about the things that are happening in that particular chapter. Yeah, I've been looking at this. Been a bit concerned about a couple of things in here. Don't like that. No, I added that. I don't feel good with it. Take it out again. But I can add a bit of this. Um, In a week, this oil paint has uh, dried, touch dry. Uh, no, not quite. Still, still a bit. Uh... So that's why I'm able to add some more to it. I wasn't comfortable to do this um, earlier in the week. I needed to to wait a bit. I've been thinking about this painting, thinking what do I need to add and where do I need to go with it. Sometimes I just need to have that period just to breathe a bit on, on my easel. Uh, and in my studio and I come in and each day, time I come in I look at it a bit and have a little think about it then go right okay but just now it's a lovely afternoon the sun is shining and I've got this feeling about the cherry blossom and about the apple blossom. The apple blossom is starting to come out uh, with the blackthorn. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get on my bike, take my little bit of afternoon exercise, just a mile or two, and I think I'll take watercolour sketchbook and steam well clear of people because we can't go too close I'll go and see if there's some good inspiration I'm going to see how the oilseed rate is progressing too because I noticed that 
when I was out earlier in the week. I haven't been out of the property for uh, several days now. Like you, we're indoors, we're at home, we're hunkering down. But you're allowed out for a bit of exercise. So I think I'm going to get my little bit of exercise. Just for an hour or so. And go and take advantage of that. I, I don't know whether you're going to see much of a difference here from where you are. But for me... Uh, it's just softer. I want to have this a little wispier. I don't mind having the, the contrast, the difference, but I just don't want it to be quite as harsh. Uh, it doesn't need to be. It, it, it can be just softer. Right, I've just had a little text from my good friend Andrew who is saying no footy today. Yeah, I know it's Saturday afternoon and there's no football. But he says, I've opened up your book. I'm having a jar of your mallet marmalade. Yeah, my homemade mallet marmalade is the best ever as everybody who's had a bit will testify. And those who haven't will be saying, why can't we get some mallet marmalade? Because you have to be one of my best, best pals. And to turn up at my doorstep with a jam jar. That's why. And you can't write out to anybody's doorstep with anything. Unless it's a delivery from Amazon. Thank God for those Amazon delivery people. Hey, I love that gag. I love that gag. Let's give a round of applause to uh, the Amazon and Hermes drivers any time between nine and six. <laughs> That's funny. That's so funny. Oh, that was great. I love these gags that are going around. It's really making me chuckle. So we'll have more of those, please. More gags. Give us a good sense of humour. Right. How are we doing? Uh, let me have a little look. Right. Uh, right, okay. I'm going to give this a little bit of a rest. It will become obvious next time you see this. I will be clear as to what I'm going to do. I know how it's going to look. It's, it's coming together nicely. It's, it's feeling, it's feeling sto not stormy. It, it's not supposed to be stormy. It's supposed to be aprily. April has big blue skies and lovely clouds. The clouds of April are just brilliant. That's why we love this month. Ah, oh, that's it. That's what I wanted. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I leave some of the grey to, to point through. See it? Uh, oh, I'm a bit out of your zone here. I'll bring the picture down a bit. Hang on. Oh, that's better. Now you can see the top. Okay. So, uh, oh, that's really nice. There's something very enjoyable about the process of painting. 
I like the process. At this stage, I've skipped the palette and I'm going straight from the tube. And what's happening is the, the, the first lot of painting is poking through. I'm, I'm getting that feel into that. Oh, that's nice. That's what I wanted. Yes! That feels good. It is a, a Constable Sky. John Constable. 200 years ago and his famous Hayway 1821 you know he only sold his first painting in his 40s in 1819 and yet and he died in 1837 so his wealth of work all came through when he broke through and people went oh I get it now I get how he paints and what he's achieving now I'm, I'm feeling very good with this, but I am going to stop because I'm going to get out on my bike. I'm going to do my little bit of exercise and then I shall be back again on another occasion. But can I just say thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Things are progressing nicely here. My next painting will be uh, either the colourful or Brescia um, that's cascading over the wall. Uh, or I'm going to paint the... Uh, uh, the hawthorn blossom and the apple blossom and i'm looking forward to the cherry coming out so i've got quite a few things expecting to happen in the next week some of the paintings but in the meantime don't forget pinky punky's available i shall make sure he's here watching us when we paint next time and um uh, also my life's journey uh, if you order that from the timmymallet.co.uk slash shop website you can get it personally dedicated with your name or the name of a loved one if you want to give it as a present for somebody you know you can't go out and have Timmy sort out your present for you so there's that if you go to malletspalette.co.uk malletspalette.co.uk get it you can see some of the paintings from my Camino and there are prints available there too um, which are available Beautifully mounted, absolutely lovely. We were sending some out uh, the other day and uh, they just look a, a million dollars. They look absolutely fantastic. They don't cost a million dollars. They're very, very affordable. And uh, they're there if uh, you want some mallet art on your wall. Look, you've been great company for me this afternoon. The moment takes me and I go, yep, I'm in the studio and I'll let you come and watch. Okay, God bless.